Hey, hey, Mood Table fans! I'm here with Miranda, aka the Gamer Girl. Hello. Yay! So, my objective today is very simple. It's like a war game. There's an objective, there's one objective in the middle of the table. It's the only one that matters. It's not make this awkward. Oh, dear. That's all I'm gonna try for this time. So, you, the viewers, you can tell me how I did afterwards. Okay? All right. All right, fantastic. So let's, let's get this started. See, and by the way, I just had this incredible urge to say something awkward just then, and I just, ah, inside, that's, that's what was going on. I was just, ah. You heard your breath I'm just clamping it down. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about you. What do you have going on? Um, well... Oh, hold on, don't act surprised. We talked about this before. I never plan ahead for these things. This is true. You knew we were going to talk about it. We did. Okay. Go ahead. What's going on in Wargamer Girl Land? Ah, uh, well, we're still fulfilling Kickstarter orders, so that's been kind of the big focus right now. But we're also working on getting some battle reports out. We, we took a, a we recorded a battle at Adepticon, and then I have some War Machine battle reports planned, and I'm going to try and get one recorded here as well. Um, and then I've also been kind of playing around with some combat patrol, seeing about expanding out, so, see? What's combat patrol? That would be the skirmish edition of 40k, so you have 400 points, oh, and okay. you have certain rules, like you can't bring uh, big walkers or big tanks, you have to, it's you know, skirmish, so 400 points of infantry, and then they have some special warrior models and stuff you can bring, and you can split them up and they take objectives or kill each other or whatever. It, this sounds a little like kill teams, then? Maybe? Okay. I know it's been around for a long time. Really? Yeah. Okay, wow. Where do you find the rules for this? <laughs> you scour the internet That's and awesome. try to do your best with it, because it's actually really hard to find for me anyway. I couldn't find it. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, so I've been practicing with that, so people might eventually see My Sisters of Battle coming out. That sounds awesome. Yeah, so Sisters of Battle would be the army yeah. that you did for that? Yeah, I mean, they're the, the units okay. I own and that I like the aesthetic of. And maybe Combat Patrol, they have a little bit better fighting chance, we'll see. Right, well, I'm sure, I'm sure they will. You know, at that point level, everything changes. Guess what army I would bring for that? <laughs> I don't know. Tech. Eldar! Of course. The best army, of course. Uh, the best and funnest, mm -hmm. even though here I'm uh, one and three, three losses. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I got. Have 40K players here. I got wiped out three times. My practice games so far have been against Tyranids, and it has been a slaughter. Oh. So not, not not favorable for me so far, but working on it. All right, so uh, let's talk about other games, up and coming games, maybe unusual things that are that are coming out. Ah, What's on the radar? Mostly, I'm still just, I'm, I have my, my primary games, I mean, even if, as I'm trying to break into Malifaux, I'm still you know, I'm trying to keep up more with War Machine, seeing what conventions I can still go to this year, thinking like Feast of Blades, or um, you know, some of the ones later in the year, but nothing's settled yet. Right. And so if I'm going to conventions, then I'm going to be practicing for the tournament, so I'm probably not branching out from games so much. So going to conventions, you think, go to tournaments? Yeah, for Because you, you went to a War Machine tournament at Adepticon, right? Yeah, I was in the Hardcore tournament. How, how did that go? I was alright. I went 2-2, two and two, which was pretty good considering I was playing against all the national players. So. Right. Um, so yeah, no, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. We didn't finish up till about 3 in the morning and we started at 7 o'clock that, that earlier that evening. Right. Um, so it was just a lot of gaming, but it was a lot of fun. So I like doing the tournament part of the convention. So 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. Oh wow, I would, I would die, I think. That is, that is brutal. They make you stand in like, baking mud, you know, guys pour like ants down the back of your shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That That's hardcore. Distraction, round 32, everyone like gets, you know, they take tongs, put a tarantula on everybody's oh my, hand. That's right. You know, you have to like, you have to do your movement in three minutes with just one hand, you know. <laughs> I was running infantry spam, and that was That's seven right. minutes. It felt pretty much like that anyway. Yeah. They saved so the ants seven for the minutes final round. to move? Yeah, seven minute turns, 50 points. So it's, okay. it's, it's pretty intense. Yeah, wow. Yeah. I can't, I, it takes me seven minutes just to go. Which is usually my practice game. War Machine is like the hardest game to like plan your move. Yeah. 
you know, because it's all got to correspond, and it's all got to go like in this certain order. Yeah, your activation so, order is important. Hats off to you war machine players. <laughs> remembering all the rules. Yes, remembering things. That's what war gaming is about, remembering stuff. It was fun when I was playing Combat Patrol, because whenever I was playing it, I was like, oh yeah, you only roll like this many dice, and here's this pile of dice for this many shots, and resolved. That was easy. Yeah, it goes faster. 40k on a small scale is oh, a very yeah. simple game. Bullets right there. Very simple. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, so what else? Um, well, kind of. As far as the channel, that's pretty much it. I'm enjoying my time here at Valhalla, though. I got here yesterday, and um, kind of seeing the new venue, getting a feel for it. You've got a lot of a lot of space. What's here. the best? Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Yeah. We're gonna do best and worst. What's so? Because you you were out at Timber Moose. Yeah. Which is this immense lodge. This right? log cabin mansion. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, but w what's the best thing and the worst thing about this new location? Yeah, I just, I went to worst thing. Uh, best thing, I'll start with, was the, what are the things out there, the turf? Ter the yurts. The yurts. Yeah. I keep forgetting the name of it. Anyway, the yurts, I like those a lot. Those are really cool little private rooms. You can set the temperature or whatever you want. Timber Moose was really beautiful with the rooms, but you had space heaters, like, it would stay cooler. Whereas, right. I like things warm, so it was nice having a little private space for them. Um, worst? A little less social, but a lot less game tables here. Right. I, that was that was going to be my worst too. Yeah. Is that um, the there? It's logistical with the game tables. Yeah. Now I haven't had anybody waiting to use a table. There's almost always at least one free table when you go in there. So for a, a group this size, uh, which is thirty, yeah. uh, but uh, there is a slightly higher proportion of non-gamers this time. I figure for every. For every three gamers, you need a table. Right. That's a good proportion, because you're not you're not playing the entire time. Right. That's uh, what I found. So uh, one table per four people is pretty good. Yeah. So it, or it's passable. So if you got thirty guests, seven or eight tables is pretty good. And I think we have six. Okay. So yeah, because you've got yeah, and then I, you've got them in different I'm places. I'm figuring that out. We've thought of taking the Sultan's Palace here, which is thirty-five feet across. And putting tables in that. But then you have awesome. two completely separated gaming areas. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. I mean, it was. Timber Moose was nice because you had the War Machine players and the 40K players and there right. might have been a couple of fantasy players in there too. But they're just all in this huge, great hall and it's this cacophony of dice rolling and. So tables. you look at that and you're like, I'm sorry, I'm right. No, go ahead. But I mean, go ahead. Uh, it was, uh, that was a save, like it almost got just a little bit awkward, but then, no, it didn't. Okay, so, uh, but pointing it out could in itself be awkward. You make the call. Okay, so, um, but by the same token, sometimes I'd go up there and there would be just, there would just be like six people in this giant thing. Yeah, that's true. You know, so, it's interesting, you know, you can really view it both, view it both ways. Um, the thing that I like best here, which is huge, that I love, I just like, oh, I love it so much, is all the rooms. Yeah, the space that is hard to argue with. The largest place we've ever found has like 13 or 14 actual individualized, compartmentalized spaces for people to be in. And this one has, uh, has 26. Right, but the Which capacity. is like double. Oh, and that doesn't count the cabins or the bunkhouse. Yeah. Or all the, I mean, it could go up to 100 people here. But it was really nice to just be able to be like, oh, yeah, hey, why don't you guys just come on up? And I, without even counting, I knew that there would be, you know, there would be some extra spaces for them. Yeah. Well, and we, we pretty much filled it. We filled all the indoor ones. Okay. There's 14 of the yurts. And uh, I think we filled, like, nine of them, nine or ten. Yeah. So, um... And they're all cool. They're all they all have these different themes to them. And on the inside, I'm in the Audrey Hepburn ones. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yeah. yeah, I love the yurts. I got my little yurt, my little kingdom out there. Yeah. And it's so. Uh, what surprised me is because you look at them, they're like, oh, Mongolian tent. So you go tent. What is a tent like? Well, it's very thin, right? And these do not. They are not like. It's well insulated. Yeah, they uh, are. You they can do lay... stay really warm because it gets really cold up here. Yes. I think we're pushing 7,000 feet. Yeah. 
here. I mean, it is. When you were some... Blizzard two days ago, three days ago? Yes, we did. But before and we got at first, here... I was like, oh no. Uh, well, there's a part of you that kind of like clicks into the worst case scenario, you know? I was like, ah, oh, we're going to be snowed in, and how are people going to make their flights? And, oh, no, 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 that's all solved. Even if it kept snowing, it would have been solved. And, um, but it was magic. It was so great. It just frosted the entire, the entire kingdom. And, uh, that it was just, it was really beautiful. And it just, it just melted. It's like sunny today. It just melted right off. Sure, and you can walk around in, in a t-shirt reasonably yeah. okay. Um, there's a lot of additional things, I guess, this venue offers. Cause you, I mean, we haven't really explored it, but I mean, I know people were running around on ATVs. And you have the paintball, paintball and archery. Coming. Yeah, I guess there's a paintball thing happening later today. And then I guess if weather were permitting, or weather were a little better, you'd have horses up here. And yeah, there are horses. Yeah. So, just a bunch of non gamery things, which I guess would attract spouses or the. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, we had 30 people, we had eight people sign up for paintball. Yeah. Right. And granted, that might be higher if we had subsequent visits. People would be used to it. They'd kind of see what it was about. Right. You know, and the ATVs, I think, it's six. So it wasn't like a mad rush for this outdoor stuff, which uh, really, uh, in terms of developing this this business concept at all, uh, made me realize that it's like, no, these guys are indoorsy. Well, yeah, I mean, that was and the that's thing about me too. the timber moose, because everybody, nobody really left. Right. I mean, it was a big house mansion, like, I don't know, it reminded me of the building out of Clue. And um, and everybody's just in, and they're gaming, and they're hanging out. Clue, the, you say? And uh, they're, um, yeah, and, and you have, like, the hot tub and the pool, but, yeah, for the most part, everybody's hanging out and gaming, or sitting on the couch and talking, or dojoing, or... And they're going to do that here too, so the extra amenities might be kind of lost. Very insulting. Right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, we were talking, and the only thing this property is missing is basically a conference hall, which could easily go on to the huge amount of space. Here. Mostly because Sean just wants a big pulpit to talk to, talk to everybody from. Is that we true? Already, we really? already discussed this earlier. There is an outdoor one that's pretty cool, uh, where there's this kind of big staging area outside. Hope it. We. <laughs> I don't understand. Go ahead. And these cool log benches that you could have a melodrama, you could have Shakespeare in the park out here, but really we were talking about all the things that Sean could say from up there. I don't he just wants to lead his kingdom. Oh, you're a part of that? Huh? <laughs> that's awesome. So we go to, um, can we start and stop? I may want to get rid of this part. Okay, so I take Thomas and Miranda to like this hilltop. And it's gorgeous, right? So, you know, you can see like 100 miles and there's this uh, like log bench up there. So I jump up on the bench and uh, I'm like, so I put both hands in there, I'm like, I am the master of the empire, as loud as I can. I, I, I. I'm like, okay, now you go. And so I'm imagining, in my mind, I'm imagining Miranda's going to jump up and say something like, Fantastic. you know, expansive. Oh, but no, she says, I didn't vote for you. <laughs> and then into the Monty Python, you know, uh, how he became king thing. Exactly. <laughs> that, that was not as expected. Uh, what did what did you say, Thomas? I didn't know. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah. Wow. All right. So uh, if your ego's getting out of hand, just saying, just saying. There you go. She'll help you out with that. <laughs> All right. So okay, well, I think uh, we covered a lot of great topics. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think I think uh, the venue is certainly a thing specifically to talk about because you are debating for October. Yeah, well, I'm, I want to go to the most awesome place that people are going to love the most. Yeah. Uh, with October, we have uh, you know we've got a really uh, meaty roster of people and guests coming out, yeah. and so we could really we could go almost anywhere, and. Uh, but, of course, if we came here, we could open it up and have more people out, which would be really nice, I think. Right, because currently it's booked up completely, right? Yeah, in October, I mean, it's been booked up uh, if, as, with Timber Moose as a venue. But this is great, we really got onto this as, like, a topic, right? Well, I think it's interesting. No, it's great, it is. 
and uh, that one was booked out before the end of 2013. I was just like, that's it. Every room's taken. We're done. And which was uh, which was a really good feeling. Well, and part so, of why I think that happened. We're, too. we're only like two minutes away. Okay. Part of why I think that happened too was the venue itself, though. I mean, I think a lot of people are attracted to that lodge, so. Uh, it is ridiculously huge. It is. It is so cool. I mean, you just go wandering around that building at night, and it is. It is at so night? Awesome. Yeah, I totally stalked the halls at yeah. night. <laughs> yes. There were so blink. there were so many nighttime shenanigans happening. I think oh yeah, that was crazy. You were eating a beer bomb at one point. I was not eating it. I was licking it. My bad. There's a difference. I'm sorry. Yep. I'm sorry, Sean. I'm sorry. Thank you. I think clarity is important. Okay, well, guys, thanks for tuning in. And uh, Miranda, it was uh, an absolute delight to talk with you. How, how do you think it fell uh, fell on the awkward scale? Oh, not at all. I think it was all very professional. And uh, not not my usual. So in an ironic way, being normal is awkward for me. So <laughs> I'm in a way, changing who Sean is. Uh, when he's no around when. Me. Uh, no, I'm actually changing overall. Yeah. That I'm like, all right, enough with the frat boy stuff, you know. And uh, yep. All right. I'm growing up. <laughs> not likely. All right. Well, we will probably Let's continue. see if Thomas will turn this off. He's like, I'm still, I'm still hail marrying for the awkward. <laughs> <laughs> he knows, he knows I could slip at any second. So if you could inhabit the body of any creature. Oh wow, is that a real thing? Yeah. You could inhabit the body of any wild animal for a night. Wild animal for a night. Definitely something that flies. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Gonna gotta go flying. I'm gonna say a hawk. A hawk. Yeah. Would you, I wouldn't have would you to worry about predators. Yeah. Uh, I'd be able to see what the mouse was like eating a whole mouse. If I could catch one. So you I'd wouldn't probably, go hunting. I probably wouldn't be a very good hawk. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't even know where to start. You know, do I tear it to pieces with my beak and then like eat it, or does it is it down the hatch? One thing. You'd find this <laughs> dead this dead hawk with like. A mouse tail sticking out. Alright, alright. Fantasy creature for a night. Oh, fantasy creature. Uh, now, this is interesting. Um, uh, a dragon. Uh, alright, so I would we've got despoil like the a village. Snake dragon? Or oh, no. The, oh, the horrible, no, red dragon. D&D red dragon. Yep. Uh, why? Okay. How about you? Yeah, what's your animal and your fantasy animal? All right, fantasy animal, be a unicorn. Oh, okay. Unicorns are awesome. Uh, and for you know what's funny? That's you may not believe this, but that's the first thing that popped into my head when you said fantasy. <laughs> and I was like, this. I mean, I must have been picking up other mental. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I don't know as far as that. Like, 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 maybe. Yeah, I'd probably do a bird too, maybe like an eagle or something big and. You gotta go for it. Oh well, yeah, I mean. Turkey vulture. They're not so great. Miranda the turkey vulture? The turkey vulture. Okay, her turkey, face, turkey. but with a giant like turkey vulture beak, bald, wrinkly, long neck. This could happen. Yep. Okay, so now I think it's only fair that you and I both make the noises of our two animals. That's a turkey vulture. So I'm going to make a hawk noise. There you go, that's my hawk. <laughs> No, I said turkey vulture. What's your real thing? No, I like turkey vulture. You win. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. You win. Those are awesome. Okay, and then uh, what about a unicorn? What is a dragon? There, let's, let's, say, let's hear your unicorn. If you were to hear the sound of a unicorn, <laughs> it would bring your heart, and you would never, uh, you would never, I would never again love recover, again. So I can't. I wouldn't do that to you. Okay, then I'll do. I'll do a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your unicorn's a little scooby doo. Peter has to meet Beagle, and everybody else in Fantasy is just giving you the shame face right now. Dragon? So good. Flee, villagers! Flee! Get in your thatch roof cottages. Yeah. 
I'd just be like, all right, I'm just burning the village down. Nobody has to die, but you should probably clear out. So I'd be like, I'd be like kind of a nice evil dragon. You know, I'd give them like a fighting chance. Non-murderer evil dragon. All right, we better go. It's, it's, it's heating up. Valhalla has the best food, so that's, that's the other thing. All right, thanks a lot. Extremely good after the thing, sir.